Maya Road Week on Paper Crafters Library blog. And every day during the week of May 28th to June 1st, 2012, we will be sharing different project ideas featuring a variety of products from Maya Road. Maya Road has a wide array of products that are fantastic building blocks to embellish or enhance any crafting projects. At the end of the week, two lucky winners will receive a Maya Road prize pack, and we'll share more details at the end of this video. In today's video, we're going to show you how to create this Way to Go greeting card. It features many of Maya Road's beautiful embellishments. You're going to need one of Maya Road's mini triangle banner canvas pieces, and I'm going to work over a drop cloth here. You're also going to need my, a Maya Mist, and I'm using the Granny Smith Green Apple. Just going to mix that up slightly, and I'm going to just completely spritz my banner canvas piece, tinting the canvas to the same color as my zipper trim that I'll be using later on. So if you notice, I just gave it a few spritzes. We're going to set this aside and allow it to dry before I continue on with any other elements. So now that your canvas piece is set aside drying, I'm going to tint my title chipboard pieces. And here I'm using my Rhodes Jonathan chipboard elements. So I'm going to make my title way to go. So I'm using the chipboard letters there. I've got the mini Jonathan chipboard numbers for my number two. And then I'm going to take and stick down the remainder of my title which is go using the same Jonathan chipboard letters and I wanted, wanted to use an exclamation point so I have the letter L as well as the dot of an I and I'm going to color that separately so for the way and the two I'm going to use my craft pumpkin pie ink from Stampin' Up and I'm just applying this directly to the chipboard piece covering each letter and then I'm going to sprinkle over top of that my WOW embossing powder. And here I'll be using the clear gloss embossing powder from WOW. So you'll notice that I'm working on a cut piece of paper. I've stuck down each of my elements to my cut piece of grid paper. And that's so that I can work with my letters stuck down on a smaller scale here and then I'm just going to pour the remainder of my embossing powder back into its original container and I don't get any contamination because I'm working on a small piece of scrap paper. So I'm going to set that aside, continue on with the remainder of my letters here and I'm going to ink these up using my Early Espresso Craft Ink also from Stampin' Up! and I'm going to ink up those letters so that each of part of my title pops off of the front of my card. So that's why I chose two different colors. The top of my card has a brown designer paper to it. That's why I chose orange for the top letters and the bottom I needed it to stand off of a more bold designer paper so that's why I chose the Early Espresso. So again I'm just inking up my letters and coating them with my clear gloss embossing powder from WOW, tapping off the excess, and then I'm going to set aside my embossing powder and heat each part of my title with my heat tool. So once each of your chipboard elements is heated and the embossing powder is set, you want to give it a minute to cool slightly. The embossing powder will stay warm and soft if you don't let it cool for a moment. So I'm just going to set each of my colored chipboard uh, parts of my greeting aside and I'm going to start to construct the base of my card. So to start you're going to need a piece of Java cardstock that measures five and a quarter by ten and a half. I've gone ahead and I've scored my card base here at five and a quarter with my scoring blade and paper trimmer and I'm going to fold this in half creasing along that score line with my bone folder to create my card base. Once you have that complete, you can set that aside for a moment and you're going to need a piece of pumpkin pie cardstock from Stampin' Up! that measures four and three quarters by four and three quarters. I then chose two coordinating pieces of designer paper. 
My first one here is the Dots DP from the This and That collection from Echo Park. And my second one is the You Bug Me Stars designer paper from Bow Bunny. And I thought that the colors coordinated very well and went with the theme of the card that I had in mind. So I'm going to take and I'm going to stick my um, Dots designer paper to the top portion of my card base with my double-sided adhesive leaving equal borders on the top, left, and right of my designer paper. Now I'm going to take and repeat the process with my You Bug Me Stars designer paper on the bottom portion and the two pieces of designer paper will slightly um, cover each other in the center creating a designer paper seam here. That's exactly what you want to happen. So now I'm going to create the arrow. I'm going to use a piece of this leaf green zipper trim from Maya Road. I'm actually going to cut this into two. So when I'm working with um, zipper trim, I always like to use a stronger scissors um, just in case you have to cut through that metal piece. So I'm just going to trim off two pieces of my zipper trim here that are relatively the same size. And you can work with about a five inch piece. Setting aside any excess that you have, just going to set aside my designer paper for a moment. And you're going to need a piece of red liner tape. And this is what's going to hold two pieces of your ribbon or your zipper trim together. So I'm going to take my red liner tape and I'm going to apply that to one part of the green portion of my ribbon here. So just to the side of the actual zipper part, trimming off the red liner tape there. So I'm just pressing that into place. I'm going to peel the red backing from my red liner tape here. And I'm going to now take my second piece of zipper trim and I'm going to stick that to the first piece so that my zipper is on the opposite side. So now you can see I'm left with the um, ribbon type of trim through the center and the zippers on the top and bottom. I'm now going to add another element before I stick this down, um, which will be a piece of Maya Rhodes Coffee Gingham Ribbon. And I'm going to stick this to the center of my matted um, zipper trim there by using a small strip of red liner tape down the center of my matted zipper here. So just trimming that. Off. I'm going to peel the backing from my red liner tape again and I'm just going to stick down my gingham ribbon to the center of my zipper trim. Now I'm just going to trim off the excess ribbon. So again this is about a five inch piece of ribbon that I'm using. I will be trimming this down to size in a moment. But before I do that, I want to now flip this over so that my gingham is now facing downwards. And I'm going to run another piece of red liner tape along the back of my matted zipper trim, pressing that into place, trimming the excess off. And now I'm going to bring back in my matted designer paper here. And I want this to lay on the card um, even with the pieces of designer paper. So when you're working with zippers, you can't always get a nice straight cut. So you just now want to bring in your scissors and cut as straight across as you can. This is why I said you're working with approximately a five inch piece. You want to cut a straight piece if you can. Your zippers will be offset slightly, that's okay. So I'm just going to measure there. And I know that my arrow piece that I've dyed um, and that is drying will be covering this side so I'm just actually going to trim this a little bit shorter creating a about a four and a half inch piece of matted ribbon there. You can discard your extras and once you have this piece trimmed down you're going to peel off 
the red backing from the back of your red liner tape there and I'm just going to align my left hand side with the left hand side of my designer paper directly over top of that seam of my designer paper. Pressing that down into place. So now that you have that complete, you can bring your arrow piece, or, or the end of the arrow, this is the mini triangle banner canvas piece, back in because it's dried. And I'm actually going to flip this over and I'm going to apply some red liner tape to the back of this piece. So I know that this will slightly overhang the edge of my card. I don't want to bring my red liner tape right to the point of the canvas because it will slightly overhang. So I'm going to now peel off that red backing Oops. and I'm going to stick this down directly over top of that matted ribbon, sticking it down to the card designer paper as well as to my ribbon trim or my zipper trim. So now that you have this in place, we're going to stick this to our card base using some Stampin' Dimensional. So you can bring your card base back in. We're going to flip this over and I'm going to apply some Stampin' Dimensionals to the back of my matted designer paper here. Peel off the backings. And then I'm going to center and stick this to the card base, leaving equal borders on all four sides. So now you can bring back your title that you've already inked and embossed. I stuck this down to my scrap paper here with some dotto, so it's easy to remove from my scraps and it's had a chance to cool so I know that everything is going to continue to have that glossy finish. So I'm just going to lay down each element to my title. The go will go towards the bottom with your exclamation point. The two will go on the arrowhead and the way will go on the top portion of the card slightly overhanging the ribbon. So because you have the height of the zipper, you are going to need to remember when, that when you're sticking down your title. So I'm going to stick down my title using the scraps and sides of my Stampin' Dimensionals. So I always have this left over. I'm just going to trim that along the sides here and I'll be able to use this up as dimensionals for the back of each of my letters. So you can place that on, peel off the backing, and you're just going to stick that down directly to the top portion of designer paper. You're going to repeat that with each letter. So now that you have the way in place, this is slightly crooked, I'm just going to fix that. I'm now going to stick down the remainder of my title and I'm going to do so with some Tombow adhesive. So I'm just going to lift up the number two, apply a small bit of Tombow to the back and I'm going to stick that directly to that arrowhead. And because it is a liquid adhesive, it does take a few moments to dry, so I'm just going to hold that in place. And then once it's set, you just want to make sure that you don't knock it. So then I'm going to repeat that process using my Tombow to stick down the go from my title. As well as my exclamation point. And then you want to set this aside and allow it a few moments to dry because you are working with a liquid adhesive. And once you have all of those elements in place, you're finished. So there you have your finished way to go card. I hope you enjoyed stamping with me. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, 
At the end of this week, two lucky winners will receive a Maya Road prize pack. The winners will be chosen from all the comments left on the Paper Crafters Library blog and Facebook page, as well as on the Maya Road blog and Facebook page throughout the week. Winners will be announced on Friday, June 1st, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. To enter to win, visit the Paper Crafters Library blog and leave a comment in the post you see here. If you're watching this video from somewhere other than our blog, you'll find a direct link to this post in the video description section. While you're there, we invite you to check out the benefits of becoming a Paper Crafters Library member by clicking on the Benefits of Membership link at the top of our blog. The winners will be announced on Friday, June 1st at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Be sure to visit our blog every day this week for more great projects using Maya Rhodes products for, and for more opportunities to win, as each day you leave a comment counts as one entry. See you on the blog!